race hazard theorem. The data sheet gives you this expression here. We've got an expression and we've got the new expression generated from there. I'm going to show you where that comes from. So the rule of this one, if you've got a variable and it's inverse in, in an expression, you can make a new term. So in this case, we've got variable A and we've got the new, uh, we've got its inverse, not A, and we can make the new term from those. So to start off with a simple one here. So we've got A and we've got not A. That's the variable, that's its inverse, and we're going to make a new term. And the new term is going to be based on what goes with the variable and what goes with the inverse. So in this case, it's only X. So the new term comes out as X. So we've got this term could be expanded out to become A and X, or not A, or X. So we've got another example here. So this time we've got two, uh, two things uh, with the variable and its inverse. So we spot where the variable is and where its inverse is. And then what we're going to do is write out that expression again. We notice what goes with the A and what goes with the not A. We've got X and we've got Y. And what we do is we add them together as a new term, ORD to the previous term. So let's have a look at a couple of examples then. We quite often use redundancy theorem after race hazard theorem as well. This is why it's useful. So first example here, this is uh, from the previous page. So we've got here, we notice that we've got A and we've got not A, so we're going to make the new term, which is X. And now what we're going to do with this one, we notice that X appears within this term here. So what we're going to do, this term now becomes redundant because of this term. So we've got the expression A and X, or not A, comes out as not A or X, which is a simpler expression than we started with. Second example. What we're going to notice first of all is that we've got a variable B, and we've got its inverse there. So what we're going to use, we're going to use these to make the new term. And the new term that we make, from the B we get A and C, and from the not B we get C. C ended with C is just C. So this just comes out as A and C as our new term. Now what we can do from this one is notice that our new term that we've made, A and C, appears within A and B and C, within that one. So this makes this one redundant because it's the larger of the two terms. And there we have it, so it simplifies down to this. It's not much more simple than this. There is one more stage we can do. We notice that both of these terms, B, uh, not B and A, are both ended with C, so we just tidy up with some brackets there.